Hello viewers, me and team here, and welcome back to Let's Play Dark Souls. After some technical difficulties, we are off on a journey once again. Well, a quest. You are a, a quest. Sister. Welcome to the Lost A questing city of I shall go. Chosen undead. If you seek Lord Gwyn's old keep, exit here. And if you are the chosen one, what follows that? Yeah, no, I didn't disappear for another couple months again, but what did happen is I had some issues with the recording and wrapped up in Dota 2 and other things. I just didn't get around to fixing it, but we got it down. Um, apparently, and this is going to sound ultra stupid, I, um, my microphone settings and audacity got changed, so it was trying to record from a different input source, and I didn't notice. I'm like, why is it not recording sound? No! And, uh, yeah, basically that ruined my day. So here we are in Anor Orlando, and I'm going to try and make a better showing of beating on these giants than I did in the previous video, and uh, grab some treasure before continuing on with the game. Of course, grabbing treasure is a significant part of the game, so you could argue that I'm continuing on with the game at all times. And that is when I'm not chain dying. Anyway, these guys don't have to be as hard as I made him look in the previous video. Even with caster build, it's not that bad. I'm uh, trying out a couple different things here in terms of combinations of great soul arrows, heavy soul arrows, great heavy soul arrows. And uh, it seems like the great heavy soul arrow is the way to go, especially since I'm just going to rest at the bonfire anyway after this. So who cares? Ah, uh, why not? I'm going to check to make sure this isn't a mimic and what have you, so no biggie there. I'm going to answer some questions since I have not done anything in a while. Of course, it would help if I had my video manager up so that I could actually see what those questions are. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and um, you guys can just enjoy the show, I suppose, with this giant mimic trying to give me a bear hug and ruining my day if it catches me. It would kill me in one go, basically, still, so that's something to bear in mind. A couple questions here. <laughs> Have I given up on Final Fantasy Tactics? No, Scott. No, I haven't. <laughs> I'm going to finish it. Before I reinstalled my operating system and upgraded the Linux Mint 14, I did save all that stuff. So, I still have um, all of my Final Fantasy Tactics material. Of course, at this point, I'll have forgotten most of what I was doing, but who knows, maybe I'll watch some of my own videos to catch up when I get the opportunity. Um, Dylan522P asks if there's any chance I'll show you guys some Madden. That's an interesting request. Um, uh, clearly, I don't know if it's clearly to you guys, but to people who have seen me trolling various forums on the interwebs, uh, Madden is, uh, one of the areas I have frequented more lately. So, huh, I actually do have quite a few games recorded. I was mostly doing that to test out my, uh, terabyte USB hard drive and screen capture device, my Aver Media, but, um, hmm. I could try and cut edit a couple games up, see if that's entertaining to you guys. Um, I probably won't get around to that during the regular weekdays because it'll take some time, so you know, maybe I'll just do one of those a week or something, or big games, or who knows, but I don't really want to delay my other projects further than I have already, so Madden can take a back burner for a while other than maybe a big game or something, or something that's interesting for whatever reason, whatever I deem that I can have good commentary for. Maybe I'll bring some Madden to the fore. And yeah, here I'm just mostly picking up things I'm not using, which is why I'm not talking about the gameplay at the moment. And I decided to go beat on that guy, too. Okay, next question. Have you ever played Sid Mirror's Alpha Centauri? Amazing game that you should definitely check out. Yes, I've played it. I don't have it anymore, unfortunately, so I probably won't let's play it. But I agree, it's a great game, and it's a lot of fun. I recommend it. That was back when they made good Civ titles, so check it out. <laughs> Very good game, actually. So, when are you going to release the next video? Here's my answer to that! Ah, uh, trolling. Am I going to do any more Civ 4? Yes, eventually. Civ 4 is not on my immediate to-do list, but we'll get back to Civ 4 at some point. It seems like I can never quit it entirely. Um, notably, we want to see more Heroes of Might and Magic. Oh, I thought he was asking for Heroes of Might and Magic 3 from Indirect Cell. No, he just wants to see more of the Heroes of Might and Magic series. Be careful what you ask for. Who knows? I might play Hom 4 and ruin your day. Ha! Ha ha! 
Ha, I speak in ignorance because I have no idea how Heroes of Might and Magic 4 plays, but I know it is not well reviewed. I have Heroes of Might and Magic 5 and not 4, so that will be my next major let's play, will be HOM 5 with uh, some Dota matches and Madden matches thrown in. That's my near future plans for the moment. So, um, continuing on, who was that that you heard in the video? Um, apparently she made it into the video. No, no, she's not my wife. I'm not married or engaged or anything else. So, none of that. None of that. That would actually be my sister-in-law. We are talking about dinner plans or something. We are going to go out to eat, so, yeah. Not nearly as exciting as it might sound. <laughs> Royal Emperor Blue asks if I, how I feel about the state of tactical RPGs. Uh, he's been playing Disgaea, which I've never actually played, although the Let's Plays of Disgaea, so much as they exist, seem to make the game seem interesting, although it does seem very grind-heavy. Uh, new Final Fantasy Tactics and Fire Emblem, I haven't had a chance to play them. Uh, so my favorite in the genre? Jeez. Um, <laughs> either Ogre Battle or Final Fantasy Tactics. <laughs> I'm afraid I haven't played very deeply into that genre. I would love to, but I I'm keeping up with a lot of different games right now, so that is an issue. And uh, that, that takes care of the question, so maybe I should get back to the gameplay. I'm still running around picking up treasure, although I finally finished that up, and that actually times out well with where I am. This is where you have to go to progress after killing the giant gargoyle thing, which I did. Not a whole lot to that one. Um, he can ruin your day like, if you're impatient with him, but if you're careful, nothing we can't handle, even as casters. And this, in my viewers, is a very favored trolling area, and you'll see why in a minute, but um, fortunately, or perhaps unfortunately, I do not get any such guests. I think I'm still in online mode for a while. Uh, there is a patch where I'm not, because someone invites me to party chat or something stupid, and for whatever reason, and I'm very annoyed at From for this, it, it's a small blemish on a great game, but they're, they were stupid with the party chat choice. They chose to make it so that you cannot enter into party chat in Dark Souls. So, okay, you can't ta even talk to people who are in other games in party chat, so that, that kind of really kills the whole social aspect of the Xbox Live there. And you can still troll the hell out of people because you can still go into private chat. It <laughs> What's the point? New Skills is really good at Madden, by the way. I've never beaten him. One of the few players I've never beaten at all. Anyway, this is the trolling area, and basically what you do is you get that bow, like the Dragon Slayer Great Bow, that has a huge amount of knockback, and you shoot it into people to knock them off. Or you invade somebody and run around on these uh, <laughs> tiny, tiny, tiny platforming along the roof here, and use something like the Force Spell or Wrath of Gods to knock them off. Yeah. That's a nice move. People enjoy it when you do that. They usually laud your grand and uh, very well thought out accomplishments by sending you nice messages. In other words, if you're completing for who gets more hate mail, this is a good place to check out. Anyway, I'm making this area once again look easier than it probably is in reality. You know, mostly because I have hidden bodies so the painted guardians don't see me, and I can shoot them at range with spells. Uh, spells, if you use them properly, do tend to make the game more trivial than it otherwise would be. Although, it's not like I haven't died in this Let's Play, so... Yeah, and it's not like I won't die again in the future. Spoiler alert. Yeah, well... If I had a perfect run from the last point I died to the end of the game, that would actually be pretty darn impressive. Especially considering the amount that I've died to that to this extent uh, so far into the game. You know, it's one of those things where it's just not a statistical probability that I get through the rest of the game without dying. It's only a question of frequency. Anyway, we get through the uh, ceiling part here just fine. Rafters, troll area, however you want to call it. Even if you fall from here, it'll still kill you, so try not to fall to your death. Not a good way to go, and it doesn't matter how high a level you are, you will still die if you fall to your death. Amazing. Death equals dying. Anyway, this opens up yet another shortcut in Dark Souls, and I always appreciate these. And this one's actually really handy, so push the lever. If for nothing else, because you need to do this to progress anyway. A lot of shortcuts in this game are optional. This one is not. You kind of need to get over there. So that kills the dead end and lets you progress, but you immediately get attacked by one of these big gargoyle enemies again. And, it, you know, there's really not a lot to this. You try not to let him hit you, and you shoot him when he commits to an attack. 
like so many other things when casting spells. And of course, if you have a 100% physical block shield, which you should, I don't care what you've been doing to this point in the game, there's many easy to get shields that have 100% physical block and do not require a lot of strength, then you can just block it. And yeah, and I'll, I'm kind of glitching him out even further because once you get a certain distance away, they try to go back to where they were, in which case you get a free pot shot. Easy kill. So I got them out of the way. Uh, a little bit of teabag action there, absolutely. But I've used up all my great soul arrows and all of my hidden body charges and a lot of my other magic also, so I'm going to go back and recharge that. And uh, that, that's going to be an exciting moment, isn't it? So, yeah, you get to watch me go back up the elevator. And this goes back to what I was commenting about before about Anne Orlando. I really like the atmosphere in this area of the game. I like the challenge of the boss fight. We'll get there eventually. Um, there are some areas in Anne Orlando which are very fun because of their challenge. And frustrating, too. Wee! No! Wow. Ayas are amazingly skilled. I can do that entire raptor session se section, own multiple hard enemies, and then I jump off the thing and die. Or maybe I should pretend that was intentional, you know, to, to save time walking. I guess. It kind of does, but uh, I'm not going to lie and say that I did it on purpose, because I didn't. I was just dicking around on the elevator, and like so many children before me, I, it, I paid the price for doing so. And that's why most sensible elevator designs in modern engineering actually protect you from falling off the side of an elevator. And they're also a little bit more convenient than just constantly going up and down like that. Could you imagine an elevator like that in like a building, like in a skyscraper? You just have a central column that's uncovered so you can get like squashed between the the floor and the ceiling, like the, the, the floor of the elevator and the ceiling and get like cut in half or... <laughs> well, it'd be a little bit more gruesome than just the cut, I would imagine. Or you can, like, fall off the side of it. Or if you miss it, you have to wait for it to go all the way up to the top floor, even if uh, there's nobody else trying to use the elevator at all. It still goes up and down the whole time. Lol. Yeah, that'd be amazing. And you have to put them on the outside of the building, too, so if you fall off, you're just done. That would be a great design. These guys in Anne Orlando, with their great engineering feats, they made such brilliant elevating systems, for sure. Then again, you would kind of have to be pretty stupid to just walk off the side of one. But you know, you horse around a little bit on high places, and yeah, mistakes are made. <laughs> I'm so smooth. Look at me get swatted by the giant tower. But he gets dead. I'm no longer in a narrow corridor, so it's easy enough to get by him. And the other one... Am I going to fight him? I don't remember if I fight him or not. Apparently I do. Pointlessly. There's no need to do this, but... Whatever. We'll show off, I suppose. Firing into a shield. That's a great thing to show off. Hey, guys! Watch me! Let's fail! Yeah. Maybe I should have titled this Let's Fail Dark Souls. Although, to be fair, I have not failed as much as some others. Nor have I succeeded with anywhere near the amount that the good players do. So... Perhaps I should have titled this, Let's Play Dark Souls in an Average Manner. But, since we're still cheesing the game and that sounds more appealing, I went with the Play and Abuse title. <laughs> ah, these guys. Uh, that back one there, if you shoot him with a crossbow or a bow, you can knock him off the cliff and he won't be able to fight back. Even if you do, like, no damage at all, he falls to his death. That's pretty handy. And apparently a heavy soul arrow will not kill them. But, uh, apparently two will. So there you go. Sneak up. Come on. Come on. Don't don't aggro. Don't. I'm right clicking like crazy. I right, will be able to show this off. Yeah. Push him off. Damage is irrelevant because he falls. And for whatever reason, flying winged gargoyles can fall to their death, even though these are the same guys that carried me to Anne Orlando over, like, many, many, many times my height <laughs> just to get me here. Uh, apparently, once you push them off the edge, they die. Normally, that guy wouldn't fall off. You have to hit him with, like, a heavy spell or something. So, yeah, maybe they were just tired, you know? They didn't, uh... <laughs> they 
<laughs> All that flying me here got them tired. Those were the tired ones. I don't know. Anyway, hidden body here lets you do a run by. These guys really don't react that well with hidden body, much like my earlier abuses of the spell. It's really good. And now here is one of the more frustrating fit areas in the game for most players, especially on their first playthrough. If you don't have hidden body or the fog ring here, and uh, you will occasionally see a soapstone saying many tears ahead or some crap like that, they mean it. There are two knights there, or whatever they are, black knights, packing dragon slayer great bows. And if I were not in hidden body, they would be firing at me right now. If you get hit by them once, you are more than likely to fall off the edge and die instantly. <laughs> Yeah, you can get hit by them if like your back is facing the wall or you get knocked into it or whatever. But um, you do not uh, you do not tend to survive well. And if you're blocking while kind of like facing the wall with your shield, it'll push you back and kill you. But anyway, you're gonna see me get hit here, and because my back's to the wall, it pushes me back further into the wall, and I still almost fall off. This area is not kind. This is one of those kind of well. It's not a nice place. I don't want to use cuss words. So I get away with popping a flask there because he tries to shield bash me. And that lets me take care of him because now he put away that bow of tears and is just trying to hammer on me with a sword, which doesn't have nearly the strength that the bow does in terms of being dangerous. Yep, tries to go back. Bad pathing. Failure for him. Victory for me. And I actually beat these two guys on my first try in this recording. So much for the Let's Player's Curse. Ha! Actually, that's not true. I, I paid my Let's Player's Curse dues in the elevator shaft when I dove to my death on my own like a stupid piece of crap. So, uh, apparently, the game felt bad for me and took pity on me in this section of the game. We'll go, we'll go with the uh, Gaming Gods theory or whatever it is in this case. However, the reason I did manage to get through this area without dying, which is nice, very nice, because <laughs> if you're a beginner here, and you don't have those Dragon Slayer and Bow knockbacks work, you will die many a time. But here we are, Fog Gate and the next bonfire. So, pretty good here, pretty good. Uh, some pretty solid progress in this video, considering the amount of time that I screwed around running back and forth trying to collect treasure. I didn't like the bonfire, rest at the bonfire, so that uh, we don't get pushed back anywhere else. And yeah, I'll level up. And I'm going to continue my focus on endurance. Not only does that help my block, it lets me swing a weapon more times. And I think I'll eventually upgrade some weapon down an elemental path of some variety. Oh, and that'll give me some viability in melee. Quiet these days. Smooth summoning out there. Anytime you see my brilliantly shining signature, do not hesitate to call upon me. You oh, I won't. Quite an impression. I would relish a chance to assist you. Interesting. <laughs> Accidental bonfire rest. You really Let's talk are to him again. Yes. Know better, I think you have feelings for me. Oh no, dear me. Pretend you didn't hear that. Yes, Tony Romo. I mean, no homo. I mean, well, actually, people have used that bit of dialogue to guess that he might be, but eh, he says that same dialogue whether your character is male or female. I think he's just an amusing character, nor do I care what his affiliation is. You know what his affiliation is? His affiliation is help me kill hard bosses and cheese the game. That is his preference, is helping me cheese. He is the cheese preference, the me and cheese preference. Ho oh, be. Alright, continuing on here, I just want to pick a few things up and uh, then I'll get back to the bonfire and the part. Some black knights to take care of here. Pretty standard stuff. Fish like for backstab, just like you did in the starting areas. And scrub them to death, basically. You don't even need to try that hard. Just, you know, just give them some pokes. And then stab them in the back. Ah, uh, no, I missed it! No! It doesn't matter because I can stab while having my shield up. That is unique to spears and uh, rapiers. Only those two will let you attack while blocking. And it's with a thrusting attack. Does not open from the side. It's a little bit fourth wallish, but we've been down that road already. And here's a room that is apparently pointless. But you know how that works in JRPGs. This is one of the times the game actually follows a JRPG convention, right? 
Actually, that's not true. There are tons of pointless rooms in JRPGs. What am I talking about? Oh my gosh, are there pointless rooms. And first thing you do, stab the treasure chest because even here, they'll put mimics, even though there's no other enemies, and no reason to believe that a mimic would be waiting here. Well, actually, there is a reason to believe a mimic would be waiting here. You are playing Dark Souls, and that is reason enough to suspect that there might be a mimic. It doesn't matter where. You can be in, like, the starting area of Firelink Shrine and just get instantly mimicked. Why not? <laughs> Part of me wishes the game did things like that, but that would be fake difficulty. The mimics, I think, were introduced reasonably fairly in this. I guess they're, like, technically an element to trial and error gameplay. As in, the first time, if you haven't played the game before, your first mimic will probably kill you, and then you're like, oh yeah, okay, well, maybe the treasure chests will kill me now. And, uh, pretty much you should be stabbing every treasure chest after that, which is what I started doing. Cult Club, not bad. Kind of like the Lightning Club, but it scales with your faith, so I won't be able to use it as effectively. Or Lightning Spear, I should say. But yeah, so technically that is that is fake difficulty under the heading of Trial and Error Gameplay. So yes, this game has a small amount, but it's pretty easy on it. You know, for the most part, you're not going to die on um, if you play cautiously. So I, I would admit that that is one of the exceptions, where the game kind of screws you over when it shouldn't. And here we got a Havel set, and I'll hang on to this set. This set is the best for pure poise in the game, but it's very heavy. But man, can you tank hits when you have the Havel's gear on. And unless you're very high level, you are very slow while wearing Havel's gear. But whatever. Uh, sometimes you make sacrifices for the poise, because you can do some things with poise that you can't otherwise. Anyway, back we go to the bonfire. Come on, come on, go, 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 go. Yeah. So that'll take care of this part, viewers. Hope you enjoyed it. The mean team, signing off.